What's up guys and gals, Goliath here. We got an interview with the great, wonderful steampunk Batman. And as you can see, he's in half cosplay. Oh, we got the boots, we got the belt, we got the, well, not the gloves, but this is him in full cosplay right here. This is a fantabulous, amazing thing. We got to see him yesterday in full costume, but it was a little cooler yesterday. So today we're talking to him about his costume, his ideas, and why, why Garden State Comic Festival. So let's do it right now. I am talking with Jason Steampunk Batman. Jason, steampunk Batman. I love that you put that in. That was great. So what, how on earth, steampunk Batman, what made you sit there and go, you know what we need? We need Voltron Batman. Like, <laughs> how did this come to be? Well, how it came to be was the fact that I, uh, I've always been a huge Batman fan. And uh, some friends of mine have been in the cosplay community for quite some time. And I went to an event in which they were at, and uh, I really had a good time. So after the event, I decided I wanted to jump into a little cosplay myself and since I was such a huge fan of the Batman I wanted to do a Batman cosplay um, but I didn't want to do something traditional I wanted to do something a little bit off kilter shall we say and um, so I started doing some research online and I do like things that are Victorian so I, I looked up steampunk versions of Batman and a lot of things came up as you know as people know Gotham by Gaslight and then there were other people's versions of that had one that looked like Sherlock Holmes you know mated with the Batman but you know that you know and I thought these are all very cool very creative ideas but I really wanted to do something a little bit different I wanted to take it a step further so in that vein I decided to come up with this which is my version of a steampunk Batman, and hence, he's been born. Um, I didn't draw anything out. I actually just drew it all from my mind. I saw some ideas here and there, and then expounded upon them. Um, I had a, a vision in my head. Uh, I took the time to get some of it started and then would add things, remove things, enhance things, throw things away. Um, so it's been an evolutionary process. I actually started it a, a year ago this past March. It first debuted last June at Amazicon 6, and it's just been one wild ride ever since then. And it's amazing. Like, honestly, you guys, I wish we got uh, you. Hopefully, we can get the nice shot to this in detail. We'll see what we can do. But the amount of work, the gloves, the belt, the chest piece, like the, the ears itself. This is beyond amazing to look at. It is breathtaking. I also kind of like what I saw yesterday because most Batman nowadays have the little ears. You know, you have uh, the Gotham Batman, you have the steampunk Batman, you have this Batman, alternate universe Batman, ninja Batman, so many Batman. I love the giant ears for Batman because when I think you see that in darkness, you know, I'm pretty sure if this walked out of a dark alley, it wouldn't matter if you, even if it looked like this. It's just a guy with giant bat ears walking towards you. You realize that you're already dead. So what made you go with the giant ears versus the little dinky ears? Well, I decided that I, I wanted to do the larger ears for number one because I was sort of inspired by Michael Keaton's. Michael Keaton's are on the larger side of the ears. But I'm also a big, huge fan of the Golden Age Batman, the original Batman from the 30s. And the original way that the Batman was drawn is he has very, very large ears. And I thought, because the era that I was kind of like leaning towards, which is many years before that, still would be, well, if they're going to be pruned down over the years, well, it would have started with really large ears to begin with. I also took into account that it would be around the time of the Industrial Revolution, and everything isn't microized or nanoized or anything like that as it would be today so I thought what are the materials that would have been used then it would have been hydraulics and steam and all that kind of stuff and if he wanted to use some sort of radar or sonar and it was built into the ears well at the time all that equipment if it would have existed air quotes, air quotes <laughs> would have existed it would have taken up a lot more space so that's why for instance the ears are on the larger side plus I'm, I'm not exactly a really tall guy to begin with. I'm only 5'10", and I wanted my Batman to be very imposing. So, for instance, with, like, my boots, I actually jacked them up a little bit, about three extra inches to give me a little bit more height naturally. And then, of course, you throw on a pair of 15-inch ears. Now I'm 7'1". So I figured that'll be pretty imposing and pretty scary and would kind of work out to my advantage. So... Hence, that's why we kind of went in the direction we did. 
which is fantastic. Because when I first saw you yesterday, you I, I thought you were towering over me, and I'm more, I'm six two guys. So I'm looking, I'm like, whoa, Batman. I gotta ask now, just for I, I know some people like to walk around their cosplays. You ever just walk around, maybe go to New York, try to scare some people, have fun with them? No. <laughs> I've thought about it. I've thought about going. I, I live closer to Philadelphia, so I actually thought about you know what if I just went and stayed at somebody's house and then hopped on the train, you know, get dressed at their house, hop on the train, ride up and down Broad Street, you know, go to City Hall, give them a little wave, see if maybe they could actually get some things done there for a change. But you know. I, I, I haven't quite gotten there yet because it is quite a process to get dressed yeah. uh, and it does require a little bit of help, you know, sort of, I've had many different Alfreds, if you want to say. Uh, Honey, help me get my pants on. <laughs> well, it's more about the armor. I mean, I was able to actually put this all on by myself today, you know, but uh, uh, it is quite a process and it weighs about 40 to 45, 50 pounds, the whole armor setup, and I've gotten used to it. But, um, yeah, I think sometime maybe I will pop into Center City, Philadelphia and see if I can scare up a few things. So, with this being said, then, since cosplay is so beautifully, well, amazingly put together, is there anything you could tell our fans and our followers and our subscribers at home? Like, obviously, this didn't just magically happen overnight. This was, like, a lot of work, a lot of effort. And, know, what happens is maybe you get halfway through a costume, the cape tears, the boots blow apart, the gauntlets just, you know, okay, they burst into flames spontaneously. Anything you could let them know, because, obviously, you, you put time and effort and love into this. Because I know you guys out there, we've all had those problems, and we just, we give up. And I know you didn't give up, sir. So what can you tell them? That's the first thing I'll say is don't give up. Be creative, as creative as you want to be. Do not let anybody tell you what you do is wrong or isn't right. It's your idea, it's your vision, it's your creativity. Do what you feel you think you can create. Be strong, be bold, and don't have any fear. If you don't know how to do something, try it. The cosplay community is very supportive, and you will find people out there, such as myself. I mean, I answer questions all the time through Facebook Messenger and, and everything, like, how did you do that? And I will tell people, I'm, a lot of people are very, very open in helping others to achieve their goal. The main thing is, be as creative as you possibly can. Don't give up on your vision. Mistakes will happen, don't give up. And if you need help, ask, because there are people out there who will help you, and just have fun. If you're not having fun, you're really, really not doing it right. That's the main thing. Just have a good time. I want to be able to help people and create things and have a lot of fun while doing it. So I'm I'm a trying. <laughs> and that's all it is, guys. All about trying, giving it a shot, because all we can do, remember the cosplaying, the anime, the DC Marvel, all the fandoms. We are a support network. We look out for each other, we look after each other. And remember, if anybody messes with you, you just come find Batman, and Batman will make sure they don't mess with you anymore. But <laughs> Sir, I want to thank you so much for the interview. Any closing thoughts you want to let them know about? Anything last minute? No, I think I've said all that I need to say right now. But if anybody has any questions, please come and find me on Facebook. It's under my full name, which is Jason Heddle, and uh, a.k.a. Steampunk Batman. Please pe feel free to find me. If you have any questions, I'd love to answer them. Again, thank you guys so much. Everyone, check them out. We're definitely going to make sure the information's in the subscription box below. So don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. We'll talk to you guys later. <laughs> Bye.